Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2022 Norco Bikes lineup. All right, let's jump into it. So we will start off with the go okay, trail bikes and we'll look at the hardtails first. Um, so these are all Australian pricing, so it's going to be a little bit cheaper for the US, just for comparison's sake. Um, but we'll dig into the hardtails first. So the Norco Fluid HT, I uh, think it's going to be a great value trail hardtail if you're looking for kind of more of a hardtail under that $2,000 range. It's definitely up there with the best. And they've also got the Torrent hardtail, which we'll look at next. But we'll dig on this one. Great to see. Drop a post, good geometry. So we'll dig and have a look. I think the HT1 is going to be the one to go for for most people. Um, that way you're getting a bit better fork, um, but you're getting everything that you want. Boost through axles, tapered head tube, dropper post. Um, yeah, everything you want. So quickly have a look at the geometry and then we'll look at the builds. But as you can see on this one, just getting the Suntour XCM fork there. So not necessarily the best fork. And then sizing wise, I believe it is dependent on wheel size. So extra small to medium, 27.5. And then medium through to large, um, available in 29ers. So 120 mil up front. And then the reaches are right where you want it to see. So 470 on that size large. So this is probably, in terms of Norco sizing, this is actually a pretty modern number here, but Norco bikes, they're definitely on the bigger side. So they're more designed for someone who really wants to push the descents. So if that sounds like you, then a Norco bike's probably the one to take a look at. So 66 and a half degree head angle and there's 29 inch models, 66 on the 27.5. So great for a do-it-all trail bike. Uh, 74.5 degree seat angle, which is decently steep on a... Hardtail, so with the hardtail, it always steepens up a little bit as the fork compresses, so that will also grow the reach a little bit there too. Um, but other than that, the numbers are spot on too. Um, you've also got rear center length, 430, so great for a fun bike. Um, yeah, really, really good all-round package, full-size water bottle, 2.35, 2.6 inch tires. Um, yeah, really good to see. But I think if you're looking at this bike, probably that one builds the one to go for in terms of the specs. So you're getting a one by, so take a quick look. Again, that nice uh, uh, X-Fusion fork up front. So X-Fusion, probably a better option for a lot more people in the US because X-Fusion parts are probably a bit easier to come by. In Australia, I believe there is a wholesaler for that kind of stuff, but um, it is definitely a bit harder to get uh, X-Fusion gear around. So that's something to take into consideration, but drivetrain, getting proper Shimano to your 12 speed, um, brakes, you're getting Tektros, so not necessarily the best brakes there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of expected as price point. Um, but other than that, pretty all around package, good all around package. Would be nice to see some slightly better tires on there. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad package for the money there if you're looking for a good trail hardtail. So yeah, if you're looking at one, it will definitely be up there with the kind of like top 10 that I definitely recommend in the market at the moment. But we'll take a quick look at the Norco Torrent which is their more aggressive hardtail. So there is the steel version, so 4,399 Australian dollars. So if you're after a chrome molly hardtail, that's probably one of the better value options at the market or Ragley have some really good options as well, probably a little bit cheaper on the Ragley. Um, but there's also the um, steel two here, so 33, uh, 3,399, and that's gonna be even better value. Um, but that one's gonna come with a better fork um, and compared to this one here. We'll take a quick look at what this fork comes with. It looks like it's a RockShox 35. So not necessarily my favorite fork. If you're kind of spending that kind of money and you want a chrome molly hardtail, probably better off going for that S1. But yeah, we'll take a look at the A2. Um, and I actually probably prefer, well, this one comes with a Suntour fork. It's a good Suntour fork. Um, the Suntour Zero on 35, so not a bad fork. Uh, 150 mil of travel, so it's really an all-mountain or kind of aggro super aggressive hardtail so this is the um, aluminium version you got two water bottle mounts there so be interested to see if you get two water bottles or that top one's just for an accessory um, they'll probably let you know here norco is really good with letting you know all the details um, of the bikes which is good to see um, so shimano dior m5100 so that's the 11 speed 11 to 51 tooth so again not a big difference between that 12 speed range and the 11 speed on these ones and the 11 speed stuff's a little bit cheaper so i actually don't mind it i'm um, getting tektro hd 745 so the orion four piston brakes that definitely work better once you change the pads and get some good rotors on there as well so i don't mind them as a brake set 
trans X dropper on those medium large extra large 150 mil drop um boost standard stuff schwalbe hand stamp tubeless tires um looks like they says their tlr so i would say they're tubeless ready but yeah not too bad so all 29ers 150 mil travel as i said bit longer reach compared to that fluid so 480 um bit taller stack too but super slack head angle 64 degrees 76 seed angle, so nice and steep. So really getting the intention of this bike, it's pretty much going to be for someone who's going to be really pushing the descents, doing a bit steeper climbing and stuff like that. Um, and in the wheelbase, 1238 and chain stays. Rear center length, depending on the size, 425. So super short. So it's going to be still pretty fun bike. Um, yeah, so I think it's a really good option. So it says only one 750 mil water bottles, but you might be able to fit two on there if you use kind of like a um fit lock bottle or something like that but do it depending on the size but really really good bike so um in terms of the value front they're kind of up there good to amazing values on the hardtails um the torrent's probably my favorite out of the two just for i well i mean they're for two different things so um i think they're going to be suit two different kind of people for someone just looking for a do-it-all kind of trail bike the fluid's going to be a better option but for someone who's probably not going to be their first hardtail say they on their kind of like moving on from their first trail hardtail a lot of people do go to a dual suspension but say if you still prefer a hardtail then the torrent's going to be a good option for you if you still like a hardtail but are going to be pushing the descents a little bit more um but yeah really good bikes um so the value is definitely up there in terms of hardtails in australia you can buy them from bike shops as well so that's good to know um from 99 bikes and then overseas um, but I think in some places you can buy Norco um, online as well. Um, but don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, really good. So we'll dig into the, we'll take a quick look at the um, Storm because I know a few people will be interested uh, in the, do, 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 where is going to be the Storm? I would have thought it would be cross country. There we go. So again, the Storm 5, 4, and 3 are going to be very much kind of your classic entry-level mountain bikes. So good for fire trails, exploring nature, and that kind of stuff like that, not doing anything too hard on the trails. Um, the Storm 2 at kind of around $1,049 is going to be a good one-buy option. Um, it's kind of competing that price range. The Trek's probably actually a little bit cheaper than Marlin, and the geometry is not too far different between those bikes. So in these kind of style of bikes, it's still very much you more, a little bit more progressive than what they used to be, but it's still a pretty much a classic XC kind of geometry. So again, that's not for, I mean, we're talking usually with this kind of mountain bike stuff, I'm talking about trail riding. So this is very much still kind of your general XC fire trail and that kind of side of riding. So yeah, you don't need any super crazy geometry. You just want to be comfortable um, upright, not going to be doing anything crazy. So don't look into too much into it, but you get a one by drive train at a relatively good price. But yeah, if you're looking to ride the bikes on the trails and start pushing them, the fluid's going to be a better option. So kind of good to average value here. There's some slightly better bikes on the market with a one by drive train with this kind of classic geometry. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I'd say slightly above average, um, in terms of what you're getting for the money. So We'll go on to go on to trail now. We'll go and have a look at the normal fluid uh, FS. So the fluid FS is one of the better value dual suspension um, bikes on the market. So if you are looking for a trail dual suspension bike, I did review the fluid on my channel a while back. It still uses the same frame. Um, so if you are interested in learning a bit more about the bike, I would check out that review. Um, I really did like it. The rear suspension left a little bit to be desired, but I really did like the geometry and the bike did push me to push the descents pretty hard. The geometry actually gave me a fair bit of confidence. So um, yeah, it's definitely worth taking a look at if you're looking for a entry level trail bike. So in terms of the entry level build, I probably would, if you're just getting into mountain biking, and you're looking for a dual suspension bike, I think it'll be perfectly fine. Um, but if you kind of want to spend a little bit more and you're looking kind of more at the fluid two um, and fluid one, those would be the ones I'd go for. The entry level builds very much for someone enthusiast getting into the sport or just someone who doesn't want to spend a fortune and just wants a dual suspension bike. But we'll dig into the geometry quickly now. 
Um, you're getting a 470 reach on that size large. So depending on what size is the wheel size, so extra small through to medium, 27.5, medium through to extra large, you're getting 29 inch wheels. So front travel, 130, rear, 120. So kind of right in that do-it-all trail bike, not a long-legged trail bike, like something like um, you kind of like your Spectrals, your YT Jeffsies and stuff like that. It's more of a shorter travel, just general trail bike. So 470 reach on that large, 66.5 degree head angle, 66 on the 27.5 inch models. Decently short cheat tubes there, short chain stays as well. And then the... Other than that, that's pretty much it. So yeah, the geometry is really where you want it for kind of just a do-it-all trail bike, especially for people um, getting into the sport. So there's it's roomy enough and slack enough to give you a bit of confidence, but it's not too long that it's going to detract too much from the fun factor of the bike. You're still going to be able to throw it around a bit easier, but yeah, it's still a bit longer than what um, your trail bikes used to be. So yeah, this one, it's going to be great for someone getting into the sport at that price point. Um, it's pretty competitive, um, but uh, if you're spending a little bit more money, I think probably the fluid, uh, FS one's probably my pick. Um, the FS two, you're getting that, uh, I believe it's the RockShox 35 silver. So not the best fork. I believe off the top of my head, that one might come with the silver might be a coil, um, fork, but don't uh, quote me on that. From what I remember, the silver might be a coil. Um, but I think the FS one is going to be probably the one to go for you're getting a pike up front you're getting the deluxe select rear shock um i think that's just going to be a bit more adjustable suspension performs a little bit better up front um and then you're getting decent drivetrain there a mixture of uh xt and slx so really good build there so that price point pretty competitive so it's getting probably not as good value as something like the Cisco t8 um but it's still good value nonetheless so if you're looking at a trail bike and you want a norco I think it's going to be a great option. So in terms of value, I'm going to give that one a good. Um, so go on to trail bikes. Now we'll look at the optic. So the optic is their carbon um, trail bike. So there's no alloy versions of the optic. Uh, entry level price point, you're looking at the C3. So if we're comparing that to, I know probably not the best comparison, you could probably, if we're looking at, Oh, it's not a bad comparison because they are pretty long bikes. But say if you're looking at a Jeff C, like CF7, um, which is their entry-level build, you're kind of looking at around 5349 So pretty similar pricing there. Um, and then you can also get it from a bike shop. So it's actually really good value. Um, so if you're looking at a carbon um, trail bike, it's a good option. So a bit less travel than the Spectral, but it's got pretty progressive geometry, as you'll see in a minute here. But the Spectral does too. So... Um, frame, you've got 125 rear travel, 140 up front, super deluxe ultimate rear shock, um, pike select RC up front, mixture of XT and SLX drivetrain, uh, brakes, Shimano MT420, so not the best brakes, but yeah, um, at least you're getting metallic pads and 203 rotors. So they've put some thought into, yes, they have spec the MT420s instead of something like the 520s, but at least they've put the thought into putting decent pads um, and then bigger road is on there as well. So uh, Norco are pretty smart when it comes to that kind of stuff like that. Decent length droppers across the sizes. Um, stands Flow S1 wheels, so pretty good wheels. Slightly on the heavy side, but, I mean, they're really good wheels, so nonetheless. And then you're actually getting Vittoria tires, which I've heard good things about as well. Um, and then good stands, rim tape, valves, and all that kind of stuff like that. So, yeah, as you can see, pretty impressive. So wheels, 29 um reach on that large 480 so pretty roomy 65 degree head angle which on a 125 mil rear travel bikes pretty slack um and then the chain stays it grows so if you're familiar with norco um and a lot of their bikes say there's not those entry level ones but these ones here the chain rear center uh, actually grows as the sizes get bigger which is great because i don't want to be on an extra large bike and have super short chain stays it just won't feel balanced um so it's good to see that they do that with their bikes so it actually grows so on that size large 435 growing in five mil increments from the size extra sorry the size small um and yeah everything else is bang up to date with everything that you want so if you're looking for if you prefer kind of more of a shorter travel bike but you want more of kind of that all mountain geometry i think it's going to be a great option so carbon front end uh la rear end on this c3 here um, I think that's really good value, um, especially coming from a bike shop brand. Um, so yeah, we're going to give that amazing value there. Um, 
it's a no we'll give it amazing we'll give it amazing especially compared to something like the spectral um that uh yeah in australian pricing it's pretty impressive um so that's probably i mean the entry level build is all you really need i wouldn't see like unless you're looking for a ridiculous amount of adjustability then you can go up a bit more but really the performance that you're getting from that entry level build is really good the only thing they probably might want to upgrade is maybe those brake levers but yeah other than that um it's good to go but look there's a shram build and a shimano build um we'll take a quick look at the shimano um but it looks like you're getting fox 36 on there which on a trail bike as you can see pretty crazy but you're getting performance elite so a bit more adjustability in the suspension um then you're getting that performance elite rear shock and then you're getting better brakes now as well so if you're looking for a bit more adjustability and you want those good brakes from factory if you're someone that tinkers with your suspension a bit more probably that c2 is going to be a better option for you um but yeah really good bikes um especially if you if you like that more new school geometry um and you like a longer slacker bike for shorter travel stuff so maybe if you've got a lot more faster trails where it's not necessarily ridiculously chunky all the time um yeah it looks like it's going to be a good option for a lot of people. So those are the main ones on the trail front. We've looked at the hard towels. So let's dig into the site, which is their do-it-all bike. This is their all-mountain bike. So as you can see, it's pretty much got almost enduro geometry, um, but at least there's alloy and carbon um, options in this one here. So I think for most people, um, there's the entry-level model, which is always going to be good if you're getting into it. Um, but the A2 model probably is going to be where the best value for money is. Um, this A2 model always is really impressed me. So I'll take a quick look at the entry level build. Um, so this one's going to be good for people that not necessarily doing the longest descents um, because you've got that inline shock and you've got the baseline suspension, but it's just going to be good for someone who wants more of a super capable kind of all mountain bike that's going to be nice and stable at speed. Um, but might not necessarily be doing the longest, craziest descents. Um, but you can still get away with that kind of stuff like that, um, definitely. But yeah, the shock will overheat a little bit more. But yeah, I think for anyone in Australia, this bike's going to be more than enough. It's not like we're doing big mountains here with kind of 10, 15 minute descents. So I think for most people in Australia, if you're looking to getting into the site kind of build kits, then it's going to be a good option at that entry level price point. So 4399, um, Yari up front, you're getting that deluxe in the rear. Like like that, so no lockout. Which this bike is, a, in my experience, when I quickly rode it, um, the suspension was a little bit more on the active side. Um, so I do prefer. Would be nice to have that lockout on those longer climbs, and it is a pretty heavy bike as well. Um, but I think for a lot of people these days, they aren't too concerned with locking out their suspension too much. But it's something to note that I did notice about the bike, and it did take a little bit to tune the bike to get it to the way I kind of wanted it. They do have their rider line program, so. It kind of gives you a bit of hints and setup guides to get the suspension dial for your body weight and stuff like that. And then also your riding style, which is cool to see. Um, but in my experience, I need to run a fair few volume spaces um, in it. Um, but yeah, again, it's going to be part of the process of buying a new bike. Any new bike, you're going to have to tinker around with the suspension a little bit. So don't look too much into that. But to your 12 speed on this one, you can upgrade that charger damper in that RC fork. And then if you wanted to get a piggyback shock, um, you can do that on that rear shock, um, upgrade that in the future. Um, be yeah, MT420 brakes, so there's entry-level Shimano four pistons. Um, but yeah, other than that, look at the geometry. So small, medium, large, extra large, 27.5-inch options. So that's great for a lot of people out there that do want 27.5-inch bikes in those larger sizes. And then there's full range in the 29 as well. So 160mm front, 150mm rear. So all mountain bike, but pretty much almost an enduro bike for a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people race this bike in enduro in Australia, um, but reaches on that size large 485. So as you can see, it's a pretty roomy bike and super slack too, 64 degree head angle and 63.5 on those 27.5 inch models. So, I mean, it's slacker than a lot of enduro bikes on the market as well. So you can kind of see uh, what I mean, how progressive the geometry on these bikes are. So very similar to that common style meta um, TR um, kind of style of bike so very much a brawler needs fast trails to get the most out of it it's not going to be for someone who wants the most super playful bike or is doing a lot more tighter slower speed stuff you really need a fast trail to get the most out of these bikes um, so rear center 440 on those large 29ers um, so again they grow as you go up on those sizes um, but yeah 
other than that, as you can see, it's a pretty roomy, progressive bike when it comes to the geometry. But yeah, as I said, this one's probably my pick of the bunch. So that site A2. So comparing it to something like the, if we're looking at the Canyon Spectral AL6, which is going to be pretty similar in terms of the build, the site is a little bit more expensive. So you are getting good suspension on this site. So this one here, you're getting the Fox 36 Rhythm Float X2, um, and then which is really good safe. Like the Float X2 is a great rear shock, SLX, um, Shimano MT520 brakes. So I really like those brakes. I think they're great value. Um, but yeah, so good, really good, smart build. So if you're looking for a great value alloy model, that's going to be a good option. The Spectral does come in at a little bit better value, um, in my opinion. Uh, so that's something to take into consideration, but I still think it's a good value build from a bike shop brand. Um, but yeah, if you're looking something like the C2s, so that's going to be the carbon models kind of around about $8,000. So a little bit more expensive, but I still think the builds are pretty good. So if we're looking at value, we're going to give these good value on these ones here. So we'll jump into the few more of the enduro -y kind of style bikes now. So on the enduro front, we've got the range. So we can't really can necessarily compare this to something like a Spectral or a Kappa and stuff like that because it is kind of a different bike. It's very much, if you're looking for a high pivot bike, um, it's something that you pretty got your heart set on. So the pricing is going to be a little bit different if I'm comparing these bikes, but I mean, 6,999 carbon frame high pivot. I think it's decent. It's not obviously the best value on the market because I mean, you're only getting incremental performance gains really at the end of the day. Um, but I have found riding high pivot bikes that I did notice the performance benefit. But I mean, if you're talking an extra, is it worth an extra two grand? Um, that's really going to be up to you. Um, but this C3 build is really good. So what's going to be the main benefit if you're getting something, if you're getting the range, you pretty much, riding the gnarliest enduro trails and you want the earliest beefiest bike that you can like it's a long slack big travel bike i mean 170 mil travel um you need to be riding some pretty demanding terrain to get the most out of these bikes so i wouldn't just be getting these if you want your general kind of enduro bike it's very much one for people that are pushing the limits so high pivot bike essentially you got a rearward axle path so the rear center is going to grow a little bit as the, you go through the travel. So that really helps get the rear wheel out of the way on those square edge hits and stuff like that. So I noticed when I was kind of like pumping through rock gardens and just trying to get over stuff like that, I noticed that the bike almost propelled me forward as opposed to getting hung up on that kind of stuff. So it was kind of a really cool feeling. Um, cornering, some people do not like the balance because the bike, the rear center is growing. So the balance kind of changes as you're kind of loading in the corner. Some people notice that, some people don't. I didn't necessarily think I uh, noticed it too much, but that's something to take into consideration. But yeah, I mean, this bike's very much for someone that's really looking for this kind of style of bike. So you want a high pivot, you want the billiest enduro bikes out there. You want something that's, yeah, can hit some gnarly stuff. So yeah, at the $7,000 Australian, I don't think it's too bad. I think that's decent value for what you're getting. Um, so you're getting good spec. Dior drivetrain, I don't really mind. Drivetrain's consumable stuff, but you're getting good suspension, which you really want to see. Um, so DHX2 factory Zeb with the Charger R, so not the most adjustability, but you're still getting a Charger damper, so it should feel pretty good. Um, other than that, SLX uh, redrive shifter, but you're getting that Dior cassette. Um, brakes MT520s, so I really like those brakes. Better those MT420s, you're getting a better lever. 203 rotors front and rear, um, decent droppers, geometry. Um, yeah, I mean, super slack too. I mean, we're talking six close to 63 degrees. Um, reaches 480. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy stuff. So it's going to be a super capable bike. Um, so again, kind of value going to go on that good front because um, not crazy value. It's not like something like the other direct consumer brands that we're seeing, but I think it's pretty good for what you're getting. Uh, and then we'll take a quick look at the last bike that we'll probably take a quick look at um, is the... Um, the free ride we'll take a look at the shore um so the shore pretty similar kind of high pivot option here but this is kind of more of their free ride bike so it is a mullet option so 
it's going to be a little bit more playful than that range. Um, but yeah, 180 mil travel. So it's going to be for people that want to take it to the park. People are doing some gnarly free ride stuff, but want something that's probably a little bit more maneuverable. Um, but uh, yeah, you still want some crazy uh, decent stability there. Um, so as you can see, doo -doo -doo, I believe it is a mullet from the, my recollection, but we'll just double. Actually, it might be. 27.5 actually i could be wrong sorry i might have got that wrong there um yeah it must be 27.5 thought it was anyway but moving on i think if you know this bike you kind of know what you're getting so yeah 480 mil reach um 77.7 .7 seat angle 63 head angle so yeah pretty much downhill numbers on the geometry uh front there and the rear center always grows as it gets bigger so it's going to be nice stable bike um, the small wheels make it a bit more playful in the parky stuff, but it's still plenty. Um, yeah, it's going to be a pretty capable bike for what you want it to do. Um, for someone like me, I'm not going to do this bike justice. So yeah, I mean, the parts that you're getting is really good. So yeah, if we're talking value, it's again up there with some of the best. So it's kind of good value to amazing value on some of those builds there that sure too. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, we'll, we'll just stick to good. We'll stick to good. Um, so alloy options only. Um, but yeah, other than that, those are the main ones. I mean, there is the revolver and stuff like that. Um, so for XC race and whatnot, but again, not too much into the XC bikes and don't really do those bikes too much justice, but they are pretty, if you're looking for a longer, more capable, um, uh, XC bike, they're going to be a good option for you. And then there's also the downhill options there, but again, not really, um, don't do those bikes justice, but yeah, if you got any questions, definitely leave them below. And as always guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.